Okay, try this again. Something happened to my internet connection. So I'm gonna wait for a few people to hop back on. Whew, what a day, technology, man. So I'm gonna give it just another minute. Here, we'll see if anybody else hops on before I get started. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for hanging with me. Okay, I'm back. I'm not sure what's going on. Hang tight with me, everybody. Wanna just see if this is up again. Okay, I see my mom's watching. Looks like we're back. New video. Just typing on the old video to say, come find my new video. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> Got interrupted. I'm live in a new video. Okay, well, while I give it a second, hi, hi, Donna. Donna's watching too. Um, while I give it a second, for whatever reason, our first video got cut short, so um, I'm hoping that this one works. Uh, either way, if this keeps happening, um, oh, hi, Hugh. <laughs> um, we, I will get you guys a video later, so if all of a sudden our live feed continues to um, kind of stop or get interrupted, things like that, I will end this live feed and I will go ahead and film myself doing the tutorial and then I'll post it. But it looks like so far this, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> this one is working. My curtains, they're from Target. It was one of our first purchases when we bought the house. Um, and I thought they were really pretty. So I don't know, I like my curtains too. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, flower art. Mother's Day is coming up. April showers, bring May flowers. Super hopeful to get outside more. We're getting a little stir crazy in our house, so hopefully this brings you a little joy as it's bringing me joy. Um, our first one, I'm gonna go in level of difficulty again today. So our first one is our egg carton flower. So what you wanna do is you want to cut out a section of four eggs, right, in your egg carton. Now, we um, have cardboard egg cartons. Oh, are we back? Okay, I think we're back. So, egg cartons. I cut out a set of four. Now, you can see mine is painted because I want to show you guys the next steps, but I'll talk you through the painting process. Um, also, when I cut out my egg carton, I had these little holes that happened. So, I just went from the end because we're not through our eggs and we accidentally threw away our other egg carton. So, Tom will have a surprise when he pulls out the egg carton and half of it's missing. Anyway, um, I also cut out some little details. So I don't know if you can see, I cut in to make them more like petals. Now, if you are a butterfly lover, this would be a great base for butterfly wings. You could put a little middle guy in there too um, and make a butterfly. Uh, what I did was I could not find my paintbrushes this morning, which if you know me, that's not surprising. Um, so I pulled out my cotton balls and I said, you know what, I can use a cotton ball as a paintbrush. So I dipped it in my pink. I did a layer of pink first then I let that dry of um, the orange color in towards what will be of that flower. And then I took blue and I went around the outside a little bit. This is a great one for littles. You know, um, I bet he would have a blast doing this. I have to keep like releasing my control of like getting paint everywhere. Um, but he would definitely love like painting. He loves to paint. Um, and it's a great way to like get some different textures in there. Um, I'm using acrylic paint today, but you can use uh, tempura, non-toxic paints, things like that. Um, so like if they do maybe ingest it in some sort of way, <laughs> it's not gonna be dangerous for them. So that's what I did. I did. Oh, we're back. I'm hopeful. Okay, so thank you guys for hanging tight with me. If anybody can tell me when it, um, maybe make a comment, if it tells me that the video is interrupted, can you still hear me? or can you just not hear or see anything? If someone could give me that sort of feedback, because I can keep talking through the interruptions, hopefully. Okay, so you wanna 
middle and your stem. Um, a couple options that you have for the middle. I found a random yellow pom-pom, so I could just boop. So, oh, I'm back. Okay. Hey everyone. <clears throat> Hopefully this doesn't keep happening. <laughs> so again, the center, you can use a pom-pom. I was just talking about how you could cut out a child's face like their picture and then stick it in the middle. That would be fun. Um, I picked out a green um, pipe cleaner as my stem. Um, I folded it in half and then I twisted part of it in to make a little leaf. So again, I can glue or hot glue that on and then I would have a little flower. It's easy to stick in places. Um, something that I saw, which is kind of cool, the Sheboygan Historical Society is putting on a May Day basket, like kind of event. Um, so I would suggest that you go check out their page. They're um, encouraging people to make May Day baskets and like put them on your neighbor's porch and things like that. So this would be a fun thing to add in to that basket. Okay. Okay, and we're back. Pip is barking. I don't know what's happening, but we're gonna just keep chugging along, everybody. Thanks for holding tight. Our next one is fork painting, okay? This is a fork that I chose. I want you to see um, the struggles that I had this morning when I was working on my examples. I don't know if you can see, it has those ridges up in the back. That is tricky. So if you have like a white fork that might be easier versus like this clear one. I dug through my cabinets and I couldn't find a different plastic fork than the one that I have here. Um, so I think like those white ones that don't have the ridges on the back, um, that would be a great one for this uh, activity. I ended up pulling out one of my like dinner forks to make more of the thing and then I just washed it right away. But I would say I'd suggest using a plastic fork. What you're gonna do is squirt your paint on your palette. You can see here, I have my colors from this morning. Then you wanna rock your fork back and forward in the paint, okay? Back and forward in that paint because you not only want the little um, tines, is that what they're called? I don't remember. You don't want the, the forky part, right, the spikies. You just don't want those. You also want the base here. So this is a tricky, um, thanks mom, um, tricky part with having it bump up in the back and having those ridges is when you use it as a stamp it um, doesn't make contact with the paper, okay? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the fork and you're going to rock it. I'll show you. Like mine, because it has those back ridges, didn't do so well. On the bottom there, you only get part of the flower. Um, so when I use my dinner fork, you can see that it made more of a tulip shape. And then you can go ahead and paint and add on stems. You can use paint, um, you can use a marker, crayon, you know, you can use multimedia. Um, cut some different shapes out and go from there. So these are fork stamping tulips. You can make a little bouquet. Um, you know, you could also make a garden kind of background too, where you can use the different techniques that I'm showing you today to make a full landscape. So that might be something that you choose to do as well. Okay, so that's fork painting, pretty simple. Again, great for little hands, um, but make sure you check out the fork before you start using it to see if it would make a good compress and a good stamp. Okay. Moving on, toilet paper rolls are back, everybody. What, what? Our favorite tool these days. <clears throat> these are toilet paper roll stamps. We've been doing, we did our bunny stamp a couple weeks ago, um, and today's is a flower stamp. So what you wanna do is grab a toilet paper roll, take your scissors and make your cuts. Try to make them equal as far down as they go, right? So you want that all to be the same. This I did five petals with. Okay, so you can kind of see that shape. Um, this one I did 12, so I cut it into four, and then I cut each of those sections into three. There's a little math lesson for you if you're looking for some ways to do math at home. Um, and so we'll have two different shapes. One way you can do your stamping is you can put your petals um, all in the same color. So I'm gonna dip it into my paint. Again, I'm using a paper plate as my palette here. I might need to grab some more paint on my paper plate, but I'm gonna dip, dip, dip. Okay, make sure my petals on my toilet paper roll are all covered, and they're not. So I'm gonna grab my paints, put a little bit more on my palette. Doo -doo -doo -doo. At least the video, I'm gonna say this and then it's gonna happen again, isn't interrupted again. So I'm hopeful that you guys, you know, are able to still hear and see me 
but we're just gonna keep on trucking here. And again, if there are questions or comments, just leave them for me and I can, um, I can give you a heads up. Okay, so you can see I have that coated. I'm going to show you my paper here. Just push down evenly, okay. Ooh, and make a stamp. You might wanna rock this one. Okay, and then you get that flower shape. Now, I have a lot of paint on my stencil here, my stamper. So if I do another one, it might show those petals a little bit more evenly, and I might help each of them out by tapping each petal down, just to give it more definition. And you can see that here too. It has a little bit more definition on this side. Another way that you can do this is, I'm gonna use my bigger one for this one. You can take one petal petal per color. Okay, so I'm gonna work on just sticking one petal in each color that I have this morning. Do, do, do. Trying to be careful not to stamp. The rest of it, we'll do some purple there, we'll do some pink. Okay, and this gets a little tricky. If you're using a paper plate as your palette, you wanna make sure that the paint isn't too close to the edge because it makes it hard to do your stamping. Okay, we have orange. And let's get that better. And then we'll put some in the green. Okay. So you can see I have a little color on each of my stamps. Again, I'm gonna gently push down and I'm gonna give each of those petals a little bit of extra love, a little bit of help. Okay, Ooh, my pink one didn't stamp super well. Let's try that again, there. And you can see, again, I have my petals. Now you can help, oh my goodness. Pippa will visit Grammy next week too. <laughs> You can see um, you have that spot in the middle for a circle for your center. Okay, one way that you can make your center, Pippa, all done, please. Thank you. One way for your center is you can take the opposite side of your stamp, okay, and you can dip that in the color that you want to use for the center. I'm going to use orange, okay, and then you can stamp your center. You might want to, as well, rock your um, rock your toilet paper roll. So you can see I have a center there. Another way that you can make a center, this is what, we'll put that over here, is I went ahead and I cut out a circle. I used the toilet paper roll to trace. I cut out a circle, and then I can glue that on the middle. You could also color in a center if you'd like. Um, use different patterns. Scrapbook paper would be fun. So here, I'll add this one here. Ta-da! So then you have a flower like that, multimedia. It's fun to just get creative and use different things that you have. Uh, maybe if you have a bunch of these little pom-poms, you could glue those in the center too. It'd be a little bit more 3D. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, next week, I decided that we're gonna work on some different puppets. So next week's project will be puppets. Um, one thing you can do is you could create, let's say, um, depending on what type of puppet you want to make, maybe it's a bug or a lion or something cool like that. Um, you could use this week's project with all the different flowers and you could make a backdrop for your puppet show for next week. So keep that in the back of your mind if you're thinking, hmm, I wonder what we could do to make a big project. Maybe you could do a little of each of these, right, and make some sort of garden scene um, with your family or on your own. And, um, yeah, we can get ready for our puppets for next week, okay? So there is the toilet paper stamp. So, so far we've done our egg carton, our two leppy fork paintings, ta-da, and our toilet paper stamping, okay? Our final one I'm really excited about is our lilac cotton swab painting, okay? So let me just get that one set up really quickly. I have a couple different stages already done, just so you guys can see. The first step for this one would be painting our stems. So you can see here <clears throat> that I started with um, the stem painting. This one I actually drew with a marker pen because I wasn't sure how painting the stem with a cotton swab was gonna go, um, but I actually kind of like the look of this one better. 
um, you want to start with a stem and then you're going to add some heart shaped leaves okay thinking about gravity right the leaves fall down so you want to make them head out downward I just did a little line here and then I added a heart shape for a leaf um, you can do them attached to the stem you can do them shooting out a little bit so those are some options okay and then our first step would be uh, or our second step I should say after our stem would be creating the base for our lilac plant okay and that's this one I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here you can see all the different dots okay that's because I use the cotton swab so you want to take your cotton swab okay and I have here I'm just going to move this out of the way there we go um, I have dark purple on my palette and I have um, light and dark green and then I have a lighter purple so we'll talk about all those different colors um, I would use the light or dark green for your stem do and your leaves do one color first and then we're letting that dry as we're working on our purple flower once that's dry then we can go back and add the opposite color that we didn't use for some details okay so we're going to start with the base of our lilac plant this is your darkest purple that you have okay I'm gonna dip I don't know if you can see that dip just a little bit okay and then I'm going to start with my base the lilac plant is more of a triangular shape okay and I would say you could get probably a good um, four to five dots after you dip your q-tip in the paint you know you want to keep it loaded you want to make sure that you have enough paint on your q-tip um, so that that color is nice and dark and comes through so I'm just gonna work here on my triangular shape up the stem. I'll show you my progress here. I started part way down the stem so you can kind of see the stem still working through. Okay, that's giving you a really nice um, line. It gives you a good shape to give it more of a natural look. And again, you wanna make sure that you keep enough paint on your Q-tip to get that color nice and dark. Might bring mine down just a little bit further, make it a little beefier here. While I'm working on my dots here, I just wanna give you guys a heads up of a couple things that we have going on at the Art Center. Um, this weekend in the near future, um, on Friday we have a virtual concert again. So a couple weeks ago, we did a Mill Street alumni concert. This week, Friday, we have uh, Zach and Cassie Glazer. I'm so sorry about Pippa. Pippa, all done. Um, just try to ignore it and I will do <laughs> Um We have Zach and Cassie Glazer. They are um, singing. We have Christopher Guy. He's also singing. So we have two tenors and a soprano and their selections are beautiful. And I'm so excited to watch my talented friends. So that's Friday night, um, May 1st at seven o'clock. That'll be premiering on Facebook. So instead of seeing us live, um, we'll have a video premiere. They'll be recording from their own homes. I'll be giving a few introductions from here. You'll see my beautiful curtains and um, we'll just premiere that video. So if you're interested, check that out. It'll be available afterwards too. And um, yeah, we're really excited about that. Okay, so I have my purple done. I'm gonna work on my first one over here because it's dry and I can add my second layer. So my second layer that I'm going to do is in a lighter purple, okay? Um, I took my dark purple and I added some white to it. So it's in the same color family, right? We don't want to just pick a random, I mean, you could, you could pick a random light purple, um, but I think it's helpful to make sure that it's that same hue. Um, and I'm going to, I mixed it with one side. So I'm going to flip it over just so I have a clean tip. Okay. And we're going to add the lighter purple, um, in according to like where the light is coming from. Okay. So like, let's say the sun is coming from this way on my page, then I'm going to add the light purple to the tip here and then towards the middle, but I want to leave the dark purple on the other side. So this is working on some shading. Okay. So I'm going to start towards the outside and just layer on top of that, um, in a lighter way, maybe with a little bit of a lighter hand just to give it some depth and to create that shadowing effect. Okay. You could even do like another 
you could have like a medium purple. So I have my dark purple as my base. You could start the um, shadowing with the lighter or a medium purple and then with a little bit of white added and then add even more white to it so there's a really light purple and then it would give it even more dimension. So I'll just show you what I'm doing here. And you can see how adding a few, so I'm not gonna go as heavy handed um, and I'm gonna leave a little bit more space between my dots but you can see adding a few more gives it this rounded, more of a 3D look. We have the, the light coming in from this way. So if I would add it over here too, I would build out, okay, and add my dots just to show where the light is coming from. So I always think, where's my sun? <laughs> and then how, is, how are the rays casting light on those flowers? Okay, I'm a messy painter. I just booped my elbow <laughs> in that. Okay, so once we're done with our flower portion, right, our purple, then we can go back and add some more detail to our stems because those are dry. So I'm gonna use my dark green here and I'm gonna to add to this side. Um, I might trace the outside of my leaves just to give them a little bit more depth and maybe put some details on the middle. Again, thank you everybody for your patience as my internet was not super great this morning. Okay, so you can see I added just a little bit of depth to those leaves. I might do the same with the stem, just kind of streak through to give it another dimension, okay? And so there you can see my leaves are a little bit more defined, my stem is more defined, okay? So thank you so much for joining me. Just to recap what we did today, we worked on our egg carton flower. Again, put a pom-pom in the middle if you have one, cut out a circle from paper, put your kid's picture in it, great griffer, you know, Mother's Day coming up. Uh, add a little stem. If you don't have um, pipe cleaners, you could use a straw, you could use a popsicle stick, you could use a pencil, you know, find something that's sturdy. And then this is really fun to like stick places, okay? So that's the first one. Our second one was our fork tulips. Again, try to find a fork that doesn't have ridges in the back so it's an easier stamp. Depending on what paint you use too, it will come off of a metal fork, but I know some people prefer not to do that. Like I washed mine right away after I did my stamping. Um, so that's an option too. Our third was our toilet paper flower stamp. Okay, different options here. You can do a few petals. You can do many petals um, just to get a different look. That's really fun to do. And then finally our lilacs. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, um, I'll add the link to um, our survey. And if you have a minute, you can give me some feedback. I'd love to see it. I want to always provide you guys with um, the right art forms, the right ideas, the right projects, um, so you can enjoy them as much as I do. Um, we hope that you are all safe and well, and we will see you next week, Wednesday, 10 a.m. for puppets. Can't wait. Bye, guys. Have a great week. Thank you.